Hi and welcome back to Dusty Book Sniffers. I'm Nicole and today we're here for the Read Around the World Challenge. and thank you so much for joining me if you are new here welcome to the channel thank you so much for stopping by don't forget while you're here hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it and then that way you won't miss out on any future posts and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back I do appreciate you stopping by and um, spending some time with me all right so we are here for uh, the read around the world challenge and for those that are new here and don't know what the read around the world challenge is i actually am trying to read a book from every country within the world and basically there is about 197 um i think i count if i counted right there's a, and i'm not known for my counting skills um there is 197 on my list and starting from a and i'm working my way through so I did um, Afghanistan last week. This week I read a book from Albania and it's called Chron Chronicles in Stone by Ismail uh, Kadir and or Kader. I'm not sure. You can say it both ways apparently. Um, and as you can see, that is the cover there. I got this book on Kindle and um, it was first published back in 1971. And I have taken notes, so I will refer to my notes as I need to. So it was first um, published back in... Uh, 1971 and as I said I got this on Kindle because um, I didn't know what the book was going to be about and I ended up going with um, Ismail Kadir because, because he has so many works and he has poetry and all sorts of stuff he's award-winning the whole lot and I'm going to talk a little bit about him just in case you've never heard of him before so the book that I uh, read as I said was uh, Chronicles in Stone it is for Albania um, it was um, 320 pages it's a historical fiction that I read um, format is Kindle and I gave it a rating of three stars um, because I did struggle to to really get into the book a little bit like it was a like it's a good book and his writing is wonderful um, I just don't think it was my cup of tea and because I didn't know much about his writing I thought I would just go with that one it was one of the works that has been translated into English he's got about 80 um, to date that have been translated into um, from the information that I could find there's about 80 that have been translated into English um, so basically it is covering a story through a young boy's life um, through his eyes and it's set at the beginning of World War Two so we have um, invading forces coming in such as the Italians the Greeks and then subsequently the Nazis come in and so it's just a, a story him witnessing the world at that particular time so the way it's written and it is actually set in a town called um, Jorgil Castor, I think it is, and it's in southern Albania. So it was quite a hot spot, apparently, when I've gone and done a little bit of research, a real hot spot for forces coming and going out of this particular town. It is also the town where um, Ismail Kader was actually born, um, although this is not his um, memoir or anything like that. It's not his autobiography. So basically, because um, he was much younger, he was only... He was only four when the war broke out and so um but this this book is from the perspective of probably a 10 year old maybe an 11 year old on the cusp of becoming a teenager i got the feeling um i couldn't find any information about what the age of the person and um that was telling the story and there is actually no name given to the narrator of the story so it's always i me and things like that so it was um a great way to immerse yourself in the story and seeing what was unfolding through the eyes of a child um i really enjoyed it i was a little bit confused for the first few chapters um and each chapter is actually broken up with like a little um township um news story from a chronicle uh, and so it's broken up i haven't been I, i've got to do a little bit further research but i'm not I, I got the distincting feeling that those little inserts into the book between each chapter were actually from a chronicle of that time of what was happening in the town at that particular time and as i said it um it actually covers the story of the invading forces and what happened around that and it's a very 
childlike story because, as I said, it's through the eyes of a young boy and he's still quite imaginative and he's still in that playing stage and everything is a wonder and, and all that sort of stuff. And it, it was quite interesting, like he was listening to the conversation of the adults around him as well. So he was putting his spin on that, trying to make hide or hair of what they were talking about um, amongst themselves. And the main people that were talking all the time were neighbours that were very close to his grandmother and gra um, grandfather. He was very close to his grandmother and grandfather. He spent some time there, um, as a lot of European um, countries do. Uh, families are very much like that. Family is a big, I mean, it's a little bit different here in Australia for me and, and my family and even my husband's family. We're, we're scattered everywhere, so we very rarely get together and there's not a, a, a huge, um, and I'm not speaking for everybody, this is just for myself, there's not that huge connection. Now, I had that as a child. Um, I'm like my family's now scattered to the wind. I've got family in Africa and England and Europe and Egypt and all over the place. So we're all scattered and even the ones that are here in Australia are scattered as well. So there's not that, you know, spending copious amounts of time with one another, relying on one another to help with the care and of the family, you know, like that, that old saying, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. And this is very much what's happening in this story. The, the village is the core of the, um, or the town is the, the core of the story and you're seeing it through this young boy's um, eyes and just like he's in awe of the, you know the planes and and everything that's going on and there's a lot of trauma in this like but he's still only seeing it like he's not fully the, understanding the gravity and the tragedy of it. I was a little bit confused there for a while because there was the mention of um, a bearded girl so I'm assuming that that um, girl was a hermaphrodite and that was what they he, he was trying to understand how does a girl grow a beard and and stuff like that and it was just touched on briefly so it is very much a jumpy sort of story but there's still that underlying thing of like constant of what's happening in that city or, or town um, and just how it all played out and and all that sort of stuff so after I got past the first couple of chapters which were a little bit confusing to me um, I just wasn't getting the story and I settled into the story I felt a lot better by the time I got to the end of it it ended really well um, you know and as I said it's just a story of what he's seeing it's, it's no real um, I didn't get that there was a point to the story but then at the same time there was a point to the story because you're learning from his his perspective um, as I said I was a little bit confused I'm just having a look I you know, overall, um, it's it, the book has, even though I was confused at the beginning, I do like his writing style. Um, and I do think there's some things that may have been lost in translation as well, like coming from a European family. I know that not everything translates real well into English. So I, I did get that distinct feeling that um, there was a little bit lost um, in translation. I couldn't find this anywhere on audiobook either. It may have been a lot better to, if I had have read it and also listened to it. Um, I, but I still enjoyed it. Like it's not taken away from any of it at all. So that is the story. And I don't know whether I'm doing it justice or not, but I do like Ismail Kader's, um, style of writing and, even the translation, um, the way it, it's gone and it played out and everything like that. So I really, it has made me want to look further, especially into his poetry um, and further books that have been translated into English. Um, I'm just, I haven't really gone through his list of what he's got. I did get on his uh, Wikipedia page and there was a list there of all his works that have been translated into English. So I'm going to have a look at that a little bit later today and see what else he's got on there. Um, there was a couple other books that popped up from people that are joining in the fun if you want to join along with this challenge there is a print off um, over in our discord if you just go to the read around the world challenge at the top it's pinned you will find the print off there and that way you can just tick the countries off I'm being crazy and doing it in alphabetical order and I'm also trying the extra challenge for me is to actually have it um, either translated um, 
into English from whatever country, so Albania into English. And the extra bonus um, challenge I'm doing is that the author needs to be born in that country. If I can't find someone that is born in that country, because we do end up with, subsequently end up with a few people that live in the United States or Australia or England or, you know, another country other than the original country that they were born in, but they're writing um, I will consider those as well but my main priority is to actually get someone that has been born from that country and it's also been translated into um, English and I do know that there's a lot of people that are you know born in particular countries and then they study abroad and then they write in English anyway um, so yeah so I'm sort of that's that's the challenge that I've got going so a little bit about um, which I found really interesting and I've taken a heap of notes here um, so he was born, as I said, he was born in um, 1936 in a town called, and I think it's Jorga Kasta is how you pronounce it, and it's in southern Albania. Um, he also studied, uh, he studied at the University of Tirana and um, Tirana and um, at the Gorgi Institute of World Literature in Moscow. Um, he severed ties with Moscow in 1960, returned back in, to Albania, and then that's when he broke out into um, journalism, and then subsequently he started writing, and after his first book was published, which is called, did I write it down? Uh, yeah, his first novel was um, The General of, of the Dead. That book enabled him then to switch wholly and solely into writing um, full-time, and so, yeah, and he's... He's, um, most of his novels are both uh, based on or drawn from the Balkan history and other le legends from around his country. And um, his best known books are The Chronicles in Stone, um, which th that's the one that I've just read. Now, there are conflicting dates on this. I The first date I got was 1971. Then I also come across a date that it was published in 1977. Um, I am not 100% sure, but I'm going to take the first one because that came up twice and I think it may have just been an error. Um, he also has Broken April which was published in 1978 and then The Concert which was published in 1988 and they're his most popular um, works at the moment. Um, in 1990 he actually defected from Albania because he was not happy with the government at the time. He is very much into democracy and they were still um, struggling to go over to um, democracy and all that sort of stuff and he was just basically very disillusioned with the the government at the time and he was defecting to France um, and he at the time he was member of parliament for the Albanian Democracy Party and so yeah so it was quite a big deal I ended up going and finding a story um, in the New York Times archives about it and basically he just wasn't happy with how it was progressing um, from communism to the democracy and he kept hitting brick walls and he just was not happy with the government at the time and that's why he defected um, and that is a very summarized um, <laughs> snippet of that but that's the main reason why he did um, and by 2020 most uh, almost 80 novels plays screenplays poetry and essays and um, story collections had been translated into 45 different languages so yeah, he is very, very well known and he has won uh, several awards. One of them was the 2005 Man Booker International Prize Award. Now, I've just got the um, list. I just saved the list for the um, last this year's um, Man Booker Prize and there's a few good books on there that I'm looking forward to um, reading. He also won the 2015 Jerusalem Prize, uh, 19... Um, uh, 2016 sorry Order of Legion of Honor prize and in 2019 Park Yong in Ni prize which is obviously one that I just butchered <laughs> so he's won quite a few prizes and that makes makes for um, some good reading on his part so that is my Albanian book I was super excited to read um, this author given his history and you know, it's good when you get an author that's got a very colourful history as well because that's almost as, as exciting as reading their works, also learning about them as well. So I've learned a lot this week about this this particular author and I'm looking forward to reading a few more. As, as I said, he's got novels, he's got plays, he's got poetry, he's got um, screenplays. So I'm going to do a little bit more of a deep dive into the author and see what else we can find and um, that way I can get a, a much better feel of his work I think because it's the first time I think I was a little bit 
I wasn't sure what I was expecting. Like the synopsis sounded great. Um, and I really enjoy, enjoyed what I read. And it was a little bit different than the synopsis though. So yeah, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. So if you want to join along with this challenge, uh, by all means, you are not too late. You can join at any time you want. This is a very long series that I'm going to be doing on my channel. As I said, um, it's got, a, I've got, a, I think, if I count it correctly, I've got 197 um, countries on my list and it's got little check boxes there so you can just check it off. You can save it to the notes on your phone and check it off there. And um, I've also got a list read right around the world on um, Goodreads that you can go over and check out too. Some books that I found in the last couple of days that I am... Um, looking forward to reading and I sometimes try to find one or two from from that country so I've got a bit of a choice as well and the next book that I'm going to be reading is from Algiers and so yeah so Algeria so that is exciting I have found my uh, book that I'm going to read and I'm going to start that today so I'll be back next week to talk about that but that is it from me today thank you so much for joining me I hope you like this little review and learned a little bit more about Ishmael Katir and basically go and have a look for yourself you might be quite surprised as I said have a great day everybody and I'll see you all again next week for read around the world bye for now